our notes in the introduction to database management design. Right now we're looking at file processing system versus DBMS. So first we're talking about redundancy. We have duplication, waste storage, and inconsistency that we need to look at. So we have an example here, and in this example we have two like files. We have a student and student record. These are both things that we want to keep track of. Now we have our student which has ID, name, address, and more if we want. And we might want to keep this student on record. So for the student in the university that they attend, they need which student it is, the name of the student, which semester, which year, course grade, and so on and so forth. Now with waste storage, we have some redundancy. And that's with our which student and name of the student. We can see that if we have a student ID or the name of the student, we can identify the student either way. Now, inconsistency is a problem because let's say we want to update one of these, like if we were dealing with files. In files, we have these two different files. So for student, if we updated the last name to Billy Joe, but the name and student record was Billy Miles and we didn't update it here, we would have two conflicting records. Even though this is the same person, since we changed one and not the other, it gives us the inconsistency. To minimize redundancy and inconsistency, we will use what's called foreign key. Once we specify the database design in DBMS, which is the database management system, it will reinforce that for us and give us consistent information. Why do we need both ID and name for the second file? This is redundancy, but it's for query processing. The student and student records are two different files. So we have this first one and then the second one. If the name is not included in our student record, so we take out the name of the student, then we would have to go to the other file to retrieve it if we would want the name. Now we're going to look at security. Security is provided by our operating system, so like Windows or Mac OS has some base level security. We also have authorized access, so for a university, students have access to some things while administrators or other faculty have access to certain things. So like professors would be this red box, they have access to certain things. And students would be this blue box and they would have access to certain things. And then there's like counselors who have access to both or so on and so forth. So some access can be shared, some access is reserved for the specific type you are. And that's shown in our figure 1.2.2 in our database. We also have self-describing. This stores data, the definition of database structure and constraints. There's different types of databases like NoSQL, which is where we have like stacked layers. We have XML and object oriented, which is where we call different functions and we used that before. Next, we're looking at integrity constraints. So we have data type, relationships, and uniqueness. Like in figure 1.2.1, which is what we have up here, where we have our student in our student record, we may want specific profiles to be unique. And that's why we have a specific student ID, because names can be similar or the same. For data abstraction, a change in file system requires a change in our program. So typically when we work with like Java and we have an IDE, we move program file to some other drive, we need to reconfigure the IDE to recognize and run this. DBS is a conceptual representation of data without details of physical storage. So with DBMS, database management systems, we do not need to do that because of data abstraction. If we want to run this, say on like a different machine, we don't need to worry about configurations. We also have multiple views. A DBMS supports multiple users to view the database in different ways. A view may be a subset of the database or contain virtual data derived from the database. This is not explicitly stored. In our current currency control, typically when dealing with files, only one person can write and read at one time. Two people would not be able to read and write for the same time. The database allows multiple access to the same database item at the same time. This is just a little introduction and this is for more higher level class. Next we have our efficient query processing. When we process files, we can typically search for something. When we want to combine things, it can be time consuming. DBMS, which is our database management system, makes this easy and is called query processing. This is just an intro here more in a higher level class. If we want to do a query and say select this from the employee, the DBMS will process things, look at the underlying structure that is in existence that supports that query and returns it. This is something that our file does not have. And that is it for all of our notes on file processing system 
versus DBMS with some examples. Next, we're going to be looking at database users.